Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me in the fish room again. So today we are heading back out to Sam's. If you remember Sam, I will link the video above. He is the one that breeds all sorts of amazing high-end guppies. This is a video you don't want to miss because it's just some beautiful, beautiful guppies. This time, uh, we're going to go over the mechanics of his fish room. We're going to talk about the way that he does water changes because he's a really cool system I've never actually seen before. Um, how he controls his air, um, how he brings water in, air conditioning, heating, everything that goes along with how you actually make a, machine, a fish room actually run. I had a bunch of you guys ask me a bunch of questions about it. Hopefully in, in this video, I'll be able to answer every single one of those questions. But for now, you guys have no idea how difficult it is to build a fish room from complete scratch and try to continue to put out videos on a consistent basis. It's wearing me out, but I'm staying on it and I'm making it happen. All right, let's head on out to Sam's to check out this amazing, amazing setup. All right, um, again, we're back in uh, Sam's fish room and I wanted to show you guys um, how how his fish room goes, the mechanics of it, what it is that he uses to uh, get everything going in here um, so that you guys know that we are in a two car garage. And if you can see back there in the back, he just has the uh, simple insulation that is on the uh, garage doors. And so he heats and cools uh, this room and the way that he does that, is he's got a, a small floor heater here for heat. He's got the uh, air conditioner kind of like I do. Um, and then it also, it's got the uh, built-in dehumidifier. So that's how he controls the air conditioner and the heat in here at all times. And then if you look up above, you'll see that he has got a, uh, uh, just a circuit of uh, the PVC pipe going around. This is how he has all of his air going. Um, you'll see here, we've got the, uh, to, so he can bleed off any air if he's got too much uh, going through it at, at, at any time. Right now, he's got so many tanks that he doesn't have to bleed any of it off. You guys can see that he's using the uh, screw-in type. Um, then he's got air lines that go down to every single one of his sponge filters uh, that he's using in all of his tanks. So he has the ability to control um, the air from up here. And then his main source of air, he's got an, uh, a linear piston back here. It's got a linear piston. This is a, a 100. Uh, this supplies all the air that he needs to all these tanks. Again, he's got about 100 uh, tanks currently going, almost all uh, 10 gallon over here on the side. He does have a few uh, 20 gallon tanks. And so, um, if you guys are looking to each one of these tanks, he's got he's got a sponge filter going in every single one of these tanks. And again, that's powered by the air um, that comes off the circuit there. One of the neat things that he has on these tanks that I haven't seen before is he has uh, he has the bottom of them drilled, as you can see right here. So he's got the bottom of it drilled. So let's look. Okay, you can see how each one is drilled and it has a bulkhead uh, on it. And then on that bulkhead, he's got a gate valve there. Uh, so whenever he wants to do water changes, he just opens that gate valve up and that water will start rushing uh, down into this PVC pipe. That PVC pipe drops down into this container and then he just simply has puts a normal pump into this container and then pumps this back out uh, somewhere into his yard. But one of the, the, the neat thing about this system that he has here is, again, it being drilled back there in the, in the middle, you see this hose coming off of it and you think to yourself, what, what in the world is this hose with this piece of PVC pipe uh, that's in it? Let's see. So what he does when he turns this thing on, this can then be used as a wand to go through and suck up all the bottom. So he's got a built-in way to go through here and suck up all the muck. So it makes it real, real easy for him to not only do a water change, but it also allows him to keep the uh, bottom of these tanks uh, just crystal clear. It's just a really cool setup. Like I said, I've never seen actually one of these before. All right, as far as uh, lighting goes on, he, on these, he has um, all just uh, LED uh, T8s on all of them. 
Um, most of his tanks don't have any plants in it, so even though these will grow plants, you can see that he's got some, uh, does have a few types of uh, plants and mosses and stuff that are going, and they seem to be growing fine just with these lights, but these are, this is a uh, much more affordable uh, type of lighting, as you can see that on every single one of these tanks. As far as the top goes, uh, you can see he's using this polycarbonate uh, tops, the same ones like uh, uh, you see that I use, uh, where they're cut down to fit the uh, 10 gallon aquariums. This stuff works really, really well. Um, again, these are guppies, so you don't have problems with guppies jumping, so the majority of these things aren't closed off. Um, if anything, it's just try to keep the uh, evaporation uh, down to a bare minimum. You'll see here in almost every one of his tanks, he's got one of these plastic Tupperware things right here, and he's got it. He's got the sides where that it's cut out of it. And the the way this is designed is so that he can come in here and he he can feed where he's just going to you know pour it into the the top here, and then it's just going to drop down, and then the fish are going to be able to swim in here and be able to eat it, and then you don't have to worry about it all getting down here in the bottom and polluting the bottom of the tank. You know, well if you're using like bloodworms, you feed them some bloodworms, and there's some left over they haven't eaten. You can then just remove this container and take that container and pour it out. Um, so you're not, again, not worrying about uh, getting that tank all dirty. It makes uh, the cleanup and keeping these tanks crystal clear much, much easier. You'll also notice in, in a lot of his different setups, he has these, these uh, baskets here. These baskets are just ones that have little small holes in it uh, that he's got some uh, stuff on the side to make sure this thing floats and then he can put the female in here and then whenever she's ready to drop, the fry have you know a million different holes that they can swim out to get away uh, from the female so they're not being eaten. Just a really cool setup to be able to, to do it like this. Let me, let me show you another way that he does this sort of the same thing. Okay, here's one of the other ones. So this is using that uh, that sewing mesh you guys have seen me use before, and he's just created a circle with it. It's got no bottom in it, but it's just got a circle. So it goes all the way down there, and again, he puts the female there on the inside. When she has the fry, the fry have the ability to swim on the outside and uh, get away from the uh, from the female from eating them. Uh, he also feeds a lot of Daphnia too. So if you'll look in these containers here, uh, this is just tons and tons of Daphnia, and he's uh, you know just feeding them with green water all the time. So he's got an, a, just an abundance, abundant supply of Daphnia. Okay, so I want to go over with you guys how he actually handles his water. So first of all, we start here, we've got an RODI unit. Uh, so all the water that comes into his fish room all goes through this RODI unit, cleans the water, removes all the chlorine, chloramines, and then what he does is he pumps that water over here into this 40-gallon uh, breeder. And in this 40-gallon breeder, of course, we've got this almost zero TDS water. Uh, then what he uses to remineralize it is replenish. That restores and gets the GH that he wants. And he also uses this Vitachem uh, that'll provide the you know vitamins and minerals and stuff that are actually needed in the water. Uh, he'll fill that thing up each and every day. And then as you can see up here, there is a, uh, uh, a device here that, com the, that comes out uh, that releases this water and then let me show you how this works. Okay, so you'll see over every one of the tanks, you've got this half inch piece of PVC uh, that's got this uh, drilled spot right here that's got a, uh, a dripper with a adjustable valve uh, on it. So what he does when he's ready to do a water change, he'll release that valve uh, up there and then that water will start pouring down through here and then these drippers are all set to release the same amount. So that thing will drain all the way down. He has about 32 aquariums that are hooked specifically on that one. So that means each one of them gets a little bit over a gallon uh, water change each day. Well, it, it, it adds that extra gallon into it. I showed you before the way that he actually removes water, but it's just a real cool, ingenious uh, setup. If there's one thing that I love, love coming to new fish rooms and seeing the way that people do things. Uh, a lot of people out there think the way that they do their fish room is the only way to do it. Um, I absolutely love seeing new ways because it always gives me new ideas on how to do things. So just cool seeing just such, uh, just incredibly different uh, ways of doing things, but being just incredibly functional uh, at the same time.
Thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit more. I know I did. Love going out to fish rooms and seeing all the different ways that people actually make theirs run. I always learn something new and find something new to implement into my system. You guys got any questions or comments? Be sure and leave them down below. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.